Good day, I am Ma'am Apo, your teacher in entrepreneurship. For today's lesson, we will discuss about the business plan. So what are the objectives? At the end of this lesson, you will be able to recognize a potential market, identify the different sources of business opportunities, analyze the market need, determine the possible products or services that will meet the market, Define a business plan and determine the, part, the importance and parts of a business plan. So, some people say that opportunities knock only once. But the truth is, opportunities come in many forms and sometimes in disguise. So, sa lahat ng opportunities na dumarating sa ating buhay, we need to uh, grab each opportunity. Why? Kasi hindi natin alam kung kailan ulit darating ang isang oportunidad at kung uh, the same opportunity pa ba ang darating para sa atin. Okay? So, kailangan uh, lagi natin silang igagrab or lagi tayong maging open sa mga opportunities na dumarating sa ating buhay. So, identifying your entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneurial traits, skills, and competencies is a significant factor before you start a business venture. But having been able to identify this, can you start an enterprise right away? The answer is no. An entrepreneurial venture starts with an opportunity that entrepreneur needs to exploit. So even though you have the traits, the skills, and the competencies, if there is no opportunity for you to start a business venture still, okay? So still, there is no entrepreneurial venture that will start in your life. So dapat, if you have the traits, the skills, and the competencies, be sure that there is, a, there is an opportunity for you to start uh, the entrepreneurial venture. Okay, so dapat magkakasama yun. Kaya ngayon yung sinasabi kanina na napakahalaga ang isang oportunidad. Okay, so meron ka ng skills, meron ka ng traits, meron ka ng competencies of being an entrepreneur. Then you have the opportunity, so grab it. Okay, then everything will follow. Next. So what do we mean by market? Market refers to a group of people or organizations that has an interest on product or service who satisfy their needs and wants. So has resources and permitted by law and other regular regulations to purchase the given product or service. So yung tinatawag nating market, hindi ito yung uh, palengke. So yung market na tinatawag natin, these are the group, group of people who are interested to buy your products or service. So, hindi natin sila matatawag na market if they are not willing or if they are not interested to buy our products. Ibig sabihin, hindi sila kasama dun sa ating uh, group of people where in yung kinatawag nating target market. So, one way to recognize a potential market is to analyze the market need opportunities through its environment. So, so ano nga ba yung uh, needs? No? Ano yung needs ng mga uh, tao? So, kung ano yung mga needs ng tao? Nibawa, food. Okay? So, alam naman natin, ang food talaga, uh, all time yan, all season. So, uh, kahit anong season, kahit anong panahon, pwede ka magbenta. So, dapat, okay? So, dapat, alam natin kung ano yung ating mga potential market. For example, sa isang community, uh, halos karamihan doon mga pumapasok sa mga pabrika. So, kapag halimbawang ganun nga na pumapasok sa mga pabrika, siguro mas better kung magtayo tayo ng isang karinderia, ng bakery, or anything na related sa food.
Okay, next. So, let us discuss the macro environmental sources of opportunities. What do we mean by macro? Macro environmental. So, when we say macro, this refers to the big, no, malaki, and external, palabas na force, forces na nakaka-apekto sa area, sa lugar, sa industry, sa market, kung saan natin itinayo yung ating negosyo. Okay? So, yun yung tinatawag na macro-environmental. Kung ano yung mga driving force, out external driving force na nakaka-apekto sa ating uh, business or sa ating negosyo. Pwede sa lugar, pwede sa industry, pwede sa market. Okay? So, ito yung mga different uh, different uh, factors na pwedeng maka-apekto sa dry, uh, sa buying power na tinatawag no ng mga ating ng mga, ng ating mga target market. Okay, so number one is social cultural. So there are two kinds of social cultural environment. Social number one is social forces. The other B is cultural forces. So what do we what do we mean by social forces? These are elements of the society resulting from human interaction that can influence the thoughts, behaviors, attitudes, actions, and even their beliefs and customs of the people. So, ito yung nakaka-influence nakaka sa, uh, sa ating mga clients kung ano yung uh, bibili nila based sa kanilang iniisip, sa kanilang behavior, attitude, actions, and even sa kanilang paniniwala sa 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 kanila buhay no may mga ganun kasi this may include values traditions ano may mga traditions nila baka bawal yung ganito bawal kumain ng ganyan okay and even the literacy level or consumer psychology one of the example of this halimbawa nasa uh, Muslim community kayo so alam niyo naman yung mga Muslim hindi sila kumakain ng baboy so dapat hindi kayo nag-offer kung food ang ano niyo kung karinderiya dapat hindi kayo nag-offer ng uh, any dishes na pig ang nakalagay. So, when you say cultural forces, this basically refer to the integrated characteristic of a group of people or ethnic group in a particular society. So, ito naman yung mga ethnic groups. So, may mga cultural, may mga cultural, ano sila, may mga cultural beliefs, okay, so na pinapangalagaan so, dapat isa sa anang-anang din natin yun sa ating pagkatayo ng negosyo. Next, political environment. So, in political environment, this depicts the governance system of an area or the local region of the business enterprise. It includes but not limited to laws, rules, and regulations that control their business practices along the permits, approvals, and licenses required to manage a business. So, in political environment, dito dumadaan lahat ng legality ng isang ng isang uh, ng isang business. Okay? So, dapat sumunod ang isang negosyo, sumunod dito para ang sagayon maging legal lahat ng uh, maging maging legal lahat ng uh, gagawin natin sa ating pag negosyo
Okay, next. So, economic environment is characterized by the income level of a region which in turn, in turn dictates the purchasing power of the customers, com competitiveness of its industries and enterprises also defines this type of environment. So, this characterized by the income level of a region. So, for example, sa region na to, halimbawa dito sa Bataan, so, may marami dito mga... Uh, tawag dito, mga uh, yung mga factories, okay, so, the same with uh, sa Manila, so, medyo mas mataas ang cost of living, dahil nga medyo progress ang ating economic, so, it dictates also the purchasing power of the customers, so, they have the um, more uh, for, uh, power to purchase because of employment. So, competitive, competitiveness of its industries and enterprises also define this type of environment. Next. Next is ecological environment. This includes living and non-living things around, around us. A growing environmental awareness for taking care of our planet and prolonging of lives of opens opportunities for business. So when we say ecological, it is about, about the living and non-living things. So environment. Okay, so... Uh, it includes the... Uh, the trees it include the trees the uh, the uh, the animals okay so uh, the climate the physical resources and the wildlife okay next So, technological environment. So, one of the nightmares of entrepreneurs is to be left behind the newest trends and technological discoveries that will make their own products obsolete. Thus, technological offerings for the improvement for, of their own ventures is unavoidable for them. From upgrading of systems, processes, or new equipment integrated in your product, it will surely be a blast. So, in, techno in technological environment, this is, uh, uh, for today, a, a very important uh, or essential no? essential part in, in our business, especially uh, in our situation today. So, we are in pandemic, so uh, more business are, are, are uh, coping online. So, they are online selling then deliveries after that uh all the all the advertisement and their promos uh and their announcement are are or can be seen in different social media so uh so uh, as an entrepreneur you must be capable of of using these social medias or uh or this uh, new technology. So if you're not, uh, you're not be able to cope with, with these uh, trends. So uh, I think uh, your your business will not be uh, more productive because uh, we all know naman na pandemic ngayon, uh, ang mga tao ay limited to um, go outside. So ang mas nakakano sa kanila is yung uh, through online. Okay? So, dapat uh, as an entrepreneur, we must cope with this 
a kind of new normal in business. So, what are the relevant opportunities and threats to a small-scale food enterprise? So, we have the factors. Number one, in social, pandemic brings about awareness on healthy living to improve body resistance. Then, community quarantines oblige people to stay at home. So, what are the opportunities? Increase in the demand of healthier food. So, dahil nga pandemic na yun, we need to uh, eat more nutritious food to uh, strengthen our immune system. Food to be delivered at doorsteps is attractive to the customers. Kasi nga, we are limited and we are scared about the uh, the virus. So, ang ginagawa na lang natin is to, deli is to uh, uh, deliver the, the food to our doorstep. Then threats, health of entrepreneurs might, might be a risk. So, dahil nga need natin kumita, minsan, uh, mismo tayo na yung nag-deliver, okay? Mag-deliver mag para magkaroon tayo ng uh, additional income. Then, pa, then, in political or in politics, tax exemption to online sellers with earnings not exceeding 250,000 yearly. So, ito yun yung bago, no? So you are tax you are exempted to tax to pay tax if you are not earning not exceeding to 250,000 yearly. In opportunities exempted amount may be utilized for other expenses of enterprise. So threats increase competition since the exemption is attractive to other uh budding small scale enterprises. Okay, next in economic, fast-growing community of online sellers, ease of opportunities, ease of access to online market for purchase of raw materials. Okay, ang poisip, pinaliwanan ko kanina. Then threats, increase competition. Next is ecological, environmental awareness on the use of eco bags and the removal of plastics, straws, and utensils. Ito marami ng Nagpa, uh, marami ng store ang nagpa-practice uh, about using eco bags and not plastic anymore. Okay? So, mga uh, recyclable, uh, not, recycla re not recyclable, yung mga, uh, dito? Uh, yung mga straws and utensils na organic. Okay? Gumagamit na rin sila niyan. Then, opportunities, Opportunity to start a greener advocacy, then threats, increased risk in product handling, new packaging might affect profitability in the terms of cost incurred on the use of new packaging. So in technological, increased usage of gadgets. So opportunities utilizing social media platforms to increase market reach in terms of marketing and food delivery services. Okay, so pinaliwanag ko na rin po kanina yan yung mga, uh, yung importance ng social media when it comes to uh, promoting our online business or, on, or our products or services. Potential for our uh, uh, threats, potential for customers, disappointments, and bashing of net netizens on poor product and service quality. Okay, so let's proceed. What is business plan? So for you, what is business plan? Is it uh, necessary? Uh, is it uh, you can you will write business plan before or after you start a business? Okay. So how how business business plan uh, or what is the role of business plan in starting our business? So it is said that a business plan is a formal written description of your business future by defi defining your goals, st strategies to meet the goals, and the time frame for the achievement of those goals. So, so business plan is a formal written description of your business. So it defines your goals, nakalagay doon, your strategies, kung ano yung mga strategies na gagamitin to meet your goals. And the time frame for the achievement of those 
goals. So what are the reasons of writing a business plan? So number one, it minimizes or remove risk of losing money. So ito yung iwasan natin. Kung meron tayong plano, maaari, maaari, ano po, no, maaari nating uh, malesen yung pag, pagkawala or pagkalugi. Avoid costly mistakes. So para ma-avoid natin yung uh, mga ilang pagkakamali. Okay, so anticipate financial avoid Okay, avoid costly mistakes. So, uh, para maiwasan natin yung mga gastos na hindi naman kailangan. Anticipate the, finan the financial requirements. So, number three, anticipate the financial requirements. So, para malaman natin, ma-anticipate natin kung magkano ba yung capital na kailangan. Organize the activities beforehand. So, kailangan maplano natin, ma-organize natin yung mga activity na dapat nating, uh, na dapat nating gawin sa ating business. Assess actual performance against set, set goals. So, para ma-assess natin yung mga actual performance na hindi uh, tawag dito, na hindi natin kailangan na, na alam natin makakasira para ma uh, ma-reach natin yung goals na nakalagay sa ating business plan. Then number six, apply for financing from lending institutions. So if you are planning to uh, to lend, no, hindi ba sama naman po mangutang lalo na kung ipapang negosyo naman natin basta alam natin kaya natin bayaran. So, if you are trying to lend from lending institution, for example, in the bank, so, they need the your business plan. Kailangan ma-impress sila sa, iyo, sa iyong business plan. At, at uh, with your business plan, malalaman nila nakikita yung, yung business mo within those five years or anticipated five years uh, income statements or financial statements. Okay? Next. So, what are the parts of a business plan? So, we have five parts. The executive summary, management and organization, product or service plan, then market plan, and the financial plan. Okay, we will discuss this one by one on the next uh, video lesson. For the for the meantime, I hope you you learn about this uh, this session. So God bless and uh, keep safe.